Welcome to Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. Israeli forces have killed at least 11 people, including five children, in strikes on the southern city of Rafah. Israel's repeatedly attacked the city ahead of an expected ground invasion. There are new reports the Biden administration has approved Israel's plan to attack Rafah in exchange for Israel not launching counter-strikes on Iran. A 13-year-old Palestinian boy who survived an Israeli airstrike on his home in November has now died after being hit in the head with a package that was being dropped from the sky. Zayn Orak died Sunday. The airstrike in November had killed 14, 17 members of his extended family. This is Zayn's grandfather, Ali Orak. The first time when the house was hit by a strike, he came out from under the rubble with wounds in his head, hand and leg. God saved him. Then, like the rest of the youth and children, because of hunger and frustration, he went to get a meal, a can of fava beans, a kilogram of rice or flour. The worst catastrophe is the one that makes you laugh. They kill my family and send meals for those who are left. And the one who followed the meal died as a child. ProPublica has revealed a special State Department panel has urged the Biden administration to disqualify multiple Israeli military and police units from receiving U.S. aid over serious human rights abuses, including rape and torture. Secretary of State Antony Blinken received the recommendation in December, but has not taken any action. Meanwhile, the U.N. refugee agency, UNRWA, has accused Israeli security forces of torturing imprisoned U.N. workers in an effort to extract false confessions about the agency's ties to Hamas. The accusations are part of a new UNRWA report that documents how Palestinians detained in Israel have been attacked by dogs, deprived of food, forced into cages, beaten with metal bars, and tortured with nail guns and electric batons. One Palestinian child released from Israeli prison had dog bite wounds on their body. In Brussels, a speech by European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen was interrupted when a member of the audience attempted to make a citizen's arrest. This is von der Leyen. This is a citizen's arrest. You are charged with aiding genocide in Gaza. You expressed total support for Israel at the beginning of this genocide. The blood of Palestinian children is on your hands. You are a criminal, Mrs. von der Leyen. You should be in The Hague. You should not be here. You should not be running for a second turn. You are a war. You are a criminal. Free Palestine! Free Palestine! The person speaking was David Cronin, an editor at the Electronic Intifada news site. He laid out his arguments again, Ursula von der Leyen, in a piece on the website, which details ongoing efforts to support Israel, even as evidence of genocide and war crimes pile up. Google has fired 28 workers who protested its $1.2 billion contract with Israel. Project Nimbus provides computing services to the Israeli military. This comes after peaceful sit-ins this week by Google workers at their New York City and Sunnyvale, California offices, which resulted in nine arrests. Kate Sim, a child safety policy advisor and one of the terminated workers, said, quote, "'Listen when employers tell you exactly who they are. McCarthyism is alive and well. Look how terrified they are of worker power,' they said." Two of the Google workers who were fired, Mohammed Khatami and Ray Westrick, appeared on Democracy Now! Wednesday, hours before their dismissal. In more protest news, 29 authors and translators have withdrawn from consideration for PEN America's prestigious literary prizes to protest the organization's leadership and silencing of Palestinian voices. In a letter, the authors wrote, quote, We refuse to be honored by an organization that acts as a cultural front for American exceptionalism. We refuse to gild the reputation of an organization that runs interference for an administration aiding and abetting genocide with our tax dollars. And we refuse to take part in celebrations that will serve to overshadow Penn's complicity in normalizing genocide, they wrote. On Capitol Hill, activists disrupted Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin as he spoke at a House Armed Services Committee hearing on Wednesday. 
Among the protesters was Nasiba Hajjaj, a Palestinian-American woman who's lost some 20 relatives in Gaza since October 7th. She held up her 16-month-old son, Hamza, during the hearing. My child is here. Turn to the service of the committee. Stop killing Palestinian children. House Speaker Mike Johnson has released the text of three bills to provide $95 billion to Israel, Ukraine and Taiwan. A vote could come on Saturday. Johnson's speakership may also be on the line, as two Republican lawmakers have backed his ouster in part over his support for sending money to Ukraine. In other news from Capitol Hill, the Democratic-controlled Senate has dismissed impeachment charges against Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas. This ends a Republican effort to remove him from office. Record rainfall soaked large parts of Oman and the United Arab Emirates this week, killing at least 19 people and submerging major cities. Some areas received a year's worth of rain in just a day. Though heavy rains are expected this time of year, scientists say they're becoming more intense and more deadly because of climate change. Meanwhile, major flooding in Kenya has killed dozens of people and displaced thousands of others. French police forcibly evicted some 450 people, mostly migrants and asylum seekers, from France's largest squat, located in a Parisian suburb. Housing and immigrant rights advocates say it's part of a plan to remove unhoused people and refugees from Paris ahead of the Summer Olympics. Buses were waiting to bring residents of the squat to other cities, even though many of them have jobs in the Paris area, and some families have children attending local schools. And on Capitol Hill, two Boeing whistleblowers did not hold back as they described to a Senate panel the chaotic manufacturing and dysfunctional safety culture at Boeing. Sam Salapur, a quality engineer at Boeing, detailed the suppression and threats faced by employees who try to warn Boeing about its planes. I want to make clear that I have raised these issues over three years. I was ignored. I was told not to create, not to create delays. I was told, frankly, to shut up. At one point, Boeing management got sick of me and raising these issues and moved me out of the 787 program into this 777 program. But Salapur says the Boeing 777 program he was reassigned to also had serious issues. I literally saw people jumping on the pieces of the airplane to get them to align. I call it the Tarzan effect, among other improper methods. Again, I raised concerns internally. I was sidelined. I was told to shut up. I received physical threats. Ed Pearson, a former manager at Boeing, also told lawmakers both Boeing leadership and federal regulators failed for years to heed internal warnings, even after the Lion Airlines and Ethiopia Airlines crashes in 2018 and 19 that killed all 346 people on board. This is Ed Pearson. The world is shocked to learn about Boeing's current production quality issues. I'm not surprised, because nothing changed after the two crashes. There was no accountability. Not a single person from Boeing went to jail. Hundreds of people died, and there's been no justice. Unless action is taken and leaders are held accountable, every person stepping aboard a Boeing airplane is at risk. Ed Pearson also called out the investigation into January's Alaska Airlines door blowout, revealing Boeing deliberately withheld data related to work on the aircraft. Pearson told lawmakers, quote, I'm not going to sugarcoat this. This is a criminal cover-up, he said. To see our interview with Ed Pearson, go to democracynow.org. And those are some of the headlines. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. And I'm Narmeen Sheikh. Welcome to our listeners and viewers across the country and around the world.